Okay, I want to talk about acid reflux or GERD, which is gastroesophageal reflux disease. It's what we know as, um, as heartburn. There's a couple different reasons for it. One reason is what's called a hiatal hernia, and that's when the stomach pushes through the diaphragm due to a weakness in the diaphragm, and, uh, and the contents of the stomach are above the diaphragm, and that's what causes that sensation of heartburn. Another reason is it is really any time the, the stomach, the contents of the stomach are pushed through the diaphragm into the esophagus, and one reason that happens is um, any time we start to gain weight, because when we gain weight, one of the areas that we usually start to gain weight is is in our stomach area, and that adipose tissue pushes on our stomach, pushes on our stomach through the diaphragm, and pushes uh, pushes the contents of the stomach through the diaphragm into the esophagus, and that's that's what causes that sensation of heartburn. Um, one thing, this is the cardiac sphincter on top of the stomach. One thing that does help tighten this, um, this sphincter is uh, high-protein diets. Um, so the first thing that we want to do if you are having acid reflux or GERD is, um, is lifestyle changes. Number one, if you're overweight, let's, uh, let's try to lose that weight. And let's get you on the right diet. If you're not getting enough protein, let's get the right amount of protein. Um, of course, we don't want too much protein because then we're going to be concerned with um, with conditions like gout. But if we, but there is the right amount of protein. Um, if if we do make the lifestyle changes and that's not effective, we can start. We can try tums. Um, that's usually where they start. Let's say take tums as needed. Um, if tums aren't effective in treating it, they'll go to a proton pump inhibitor. Um, proton pump inhibitors are drugs that started to gain popularities in the 1980s, 1990s. They used to be prescription medications. They're almost all over the counter now. Um, the, the reason for that is because the patent ran out. Um, that You see it all the time. That's what happens with, with, with drugs. They start out as prescription medications. The patent runs out. Now they're over the counter. Um, if pr proton pump inhibitors, uh, well, proton pumps secrete hydrochloric acid, so if you inhibit that, uh, it decreases the amount of acid in, in the stomach. So it's similar um, in, in concept to how Tums works, but it works uh, on a different level. Um, People who aren't responsive to proton pump inhibitors can have a surgery that's called a laparoscopic Neeson fundoplication. It's where they take the stomach, um, and it, I wish I could draw this, but I, I'm not that much of an artist, but I can take the, the stomach and wrap it. Uh, let me at least draw the, the esophagus here. Uh, that was supposed to be red, but that's okay. Um, but they'll take the stomach and they'll wrap it around the esophagus. They'll pull it up and they'll wrap it around the esophagus so it keeps that esophagus tight so the the uh, the contents of the stomach don't uh, don't get into the esophagus and cause that heartburn um, it's a, it's a really incredible incredible surgery uh, it, it's done like I said laparoscopically now um, it's and it's very effective for people who who aren't responsive to medication um, but anyway the problem with the medication with uh, with Tums and with the proton pump inhibitors, is it, we're treating the wrong thing. Uh, you're decreasing the amount of acid in the stomach, but um, why is the stomach acidic? Well, there's reasons for that. Number one, it kills bacteria. Um, I could go on and on about why the stomach's acidic, but the point is, um, it it's supposed to be, and and. When did it change? When did it get more acidic that now we need to be on TOMS or we need to be on proton pump inhibitors? Um, it, it didn't. That, it, that never happened. What happened is there was a structural change in the stomach. The stomach is made up of goblet cells. Um, that's what I have drawn here. These, these are rep representing goblet cells. Over time, what happens if you keep treating with TOMS, um, Proton pump inhibitors, not so much, but uh, Tums specifically what will happen. Uh, goblet cells are somewhat similar to stem cells. They do retain a memory. And over time, if you keep if you keep decreasing the level of acid, these goblet cells will space out more and more, and you're, you're going to aggravate the problem, and you're going to have to keep taking your Tums even more often. Um, the red here will represent uh, the the acid contents of the stomach. And when these goblet cells are, 
are packed closely together like they should be. The stomach or the uh, you know the stomach contents, the acidic contents, don't get through these goblet cells real well, um, and so you don't have heartburn. But when when those goblet cells start spacing themselves out, the acidic content is able to get itself through the stomach, and that's why you have heartburn. Um, so really, we're, we're treating the wrong thing. What we're treating does work. It is effective. I'm not saying Tums and proton pump inhibitors don't work because they do work, but um, it's, it's worsening the problem. Over time, it's, it's not an effective treatment. Um, but what is an effective treatment is something called, and I'm sure you've heard of this, you've probably put it on your skin before, it's called aloe. They make aloe in a solution, in a, in a drink form, and you can drink it. And what it does is it soothes the goblet cells of the stomach um, so, that, so that acid doesn't secrete through, um, and it does help with heartburn. Um, if you don't believe me, and you, and you shouldn't, don't believe everything you hear, um, go, go do your research and look this up. Uh, look look up aloe and look up studies on it. Uh, also look up studies on proton pump inhibitors um, and Tums if you want to. Uh, but aloe is very effective. Uh, the problem with it is you can't take it once a day and and have prevent uh, heartburn all day long. Uh, you need to drink it throughout the day because it's it's soothing the stomach. Um, it's, it's just like if you... and it, Well, the, the other problem with it too is um, is it needs to, it needs to get to the stomach, um, of course, uh, and it needs to get to the intestines too. Uh, you can use it for intestinal problems, um, but the problem with it for intestinal problems is it's harder to get it to all of the intestines because, of course, you can get, get it to the stomach easier, but um, it's it's going to lose its way as it keeps going through the intestine. Um, but either way, it does work for it does work for acid reflux. Um, so, you know, why we don't use this more, why we don't talk about this, why you don't find it in textbooks, I don't know. But um, but do research it. There have been mon many studies done on this. It is effective. It does work. Um, I think that's everything I have on acid reflux and GERD. So, if you have any questions or comments, please let me know.